Hey everybody, and welcome to a brand new project. This is called Stalivar, and it'll be a collaboration between me, as well as Operateur. Hello. And also Rudy. Hey there. So uh, yeah, from this point onward, we're just gonna try and do a bit of a joint recording here. Although I also have to say, uh, the quality might not be the best. We're recording this kind of late at night, and also I'm going through a cold at the moment, which is why we haven't been able to do this earlier. Uh, but yeah, we're here now, and that's all that matters, I think. It is, yep. Yep. So, I think you guys can explain a little bit more about how this project kind of came to be, right? Because I only joined this at a later stage. Well, yeah, it, it kind of was created in a comment section of another video. I, I don't really want to go too deep into it, but um, it was more or less like lush idea i guess at the very beginning but it appeared that a few minutes later like a discord chat was created and then a few people joined the the chat and we were creating the idea of uh, yeah having an awesome uh, coaster and and really theme it to the maximum uh, possible in planet coaster at uh, the moment and yeah for several reasons which you don't really need to name here um it, it didn't really work out the way it was initially planned um but yeah uh, some of us didn't really want to go let go and wanted to keep it on and so we asked Silph if he kind of wants to jump in <laughs> besides his other projects which sometimes just appear and then <laughs> never reappear so <Sylph. laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we, we all know that Sylph likes to build coasters and so we thought, okay, it might make sense to, to bring him in and uh, might give a good connection and that's, yeah, how it all was uh, created and I feel like it was just more or less like a lush idea that, um, yeah, turned out to be some cool looking project now. Yeah, we hope, of course. All right. Well, yeah, I hope you guys are happy with the layout so far. I was actually really interested in the general theme of this ride, especially because, um, Last week, I went to Estonia for a school excursion and a surprisingly large part of the program was visiting old abandoned buildings from, uh, you know, the USSR period and just before that as well. And one of the things we did is we went to the city called Narva in the far east of Estonia, bordering on Russia. And this is pretty much the only Russian city in the European Union. Like, 99% of the people in the town spoke Russian, uh, there were barely any Estonians at all, and it was a very post-industrial town, and they have this huge abandoned factory called Kremholmen, I think, uh, which we visited, and it was absolutely amazing. I actually got a lot of inspiration from that as well, and I just really dig that whole aesthetic. And we've also been looking for a lot of reference pictures of what this whole project would look like, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm here for it. Yeah, and I have to say a huge props also to uh, to Operator who who came up actually with the theme when we were talking about um, the theme at the very beginning in, in the chat. Uh, we were still brainstorming a bit about what it will look like and how we could theme that coaster. I, I may have to say that there was another type of coaster planned at the beginning, which would have mm -hmm. also you know, needed a little bit of a different theming, to be honest, but uh, we somehow um, came up with that topic. As I said, our operator came up with it, and, and I think uh, we too, we actually lo loved it from the first second. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think this is why it turned out. And it, yeah, it's, it's a happy coincidence, I guess, still, that you were able to visit it then and, and get your inspiration from there, because clearly mm -hmm. I couldn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, I feel like this is a, a really cool thing that you were really able to to get some more real life uh, things out of it. And I have to say, I really dig uh, this this theme quite a bit. Uh, I've never touched it to be honest. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's also a coincidence that uh, Sylph that you went uh, there, and uh, we actually came up with theme and name for it also just before you went to the trip. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, it's definitely all coincidental. I didn't even know that we were going to do that sort of thing on the excursion. So that was actually really cool. And also I have to say, uh, credit goes to Operateur for the structures that you see at the beginning of the park as well, um, which I think we'll upload as a sort of episode zero because they're kind of like preparation for the rest of the project, but the coaster isn't there yet. Yeah, it was kind of... Um a uh, prototype to um, set the theming and maybe uh, just to get um, the idea on how it, uh, it would look. 
Yeah, which, which is awesome because I, I really have to say that, you know, with Operator and I, I guess most of you people out there will know him from, from his awesome recreations and also some other projects. And I have to say what I love about your work always is like how freaking precise that is. And <laughs> this is this is like really, I uh, when you sent over the first pictures, I was like, yes, it's exactly this, you know, with the crane and stuff. I don't want to spoil too much because still people should should watch that one but uh yeah yeah that's for next there uh, yeah I, i only can say that this really goes into a direction uh that looks totally fancy and uh somewhat unseen it, it's not that used to you know it's not that theme that you're used to seeing quite often in in theme parks or whatnot so yeah i'm uh, i'm really happy to see and, and also to to go on with that and to work on what you've already started to work with at the beginning so yeah it's it's kind of a cool first initial prototype or proof of concept if you will yeah thanks yeah it was um something i already wanted to build a very long time he planned course to but i have a lot of projects now and i really didn't want to start something new but of course with um, you guys it's just something uh yeah kickstarted it of course whenever you get in touch with silver me don't worry there will be always a new project <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure but i really don't mind to have start a new project but I, i just don't want to start again something that takes too long yeah. but i think yeah me first the initial idea was to keep this small but yeah yeah i think we, we still consider to to keep it as small as possible i i'd call it here i don't want to do overly uh, crazy promises because we we all know that we barely ever keep up to them but um i think this will be more like having one as as far as i understood as far as i think like like kind of heavy theming around the station and then kind of uses also a bit more like landscaping and you know and environmental Uh, elements rather than just making it all very heavily themed but yeah we never know yeah. how it will come up in the end yeah the coaster is um, rather compact anyway so we um, the plan was well my plan was to have like a small um, like workers village somewhere in there and then work around in like you said the scenery and landscaping like a parking lot and all deserted of course Yeah, and every, everything should, should like be very broken and rusty and like yeah, uh, like this. Yeah. Well, I really like that idea. Actually, that was one of the things that we also noted on our uh, visit to the factory in Narva is that they have these workers' villages right next to the factory as well. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that, but you know, yeah, it's kind of makes sense if you talk about that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I really have to say I, I like how how the coaster is turning out. I mean, I've seen some screens in advance, but I've never seen how you really were working on it. So uh, smoothing like hell, but uh, it, it's turning out really great. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should probably say a bit about this because I haven't said too much about the actual coaster that I'm building here. Uh, so the main inspiration was Takabisha in FujiQ Highland. Uh, what with that launch and large vert uh, vertical lift hill on the drop. Um, and that's just the, the general sort of way that the layout goes as well. It's just really large elements, uh, many of which are inversions and, you know, taking them quite slowly. So you get a lot of hang time at the top of each inversion and altogether on a very small footprint. So it has this, this really cool, even industrial kind of look to the layout itself, I think. And I think it works quite well for a, a project like this. Absolutely, yeah. I also I like the, the lift hill itself, like the, the base structure of the lift hill. And uh, I mean, this is even the more recently added one, isn't it that? So it, it mm -hmm. kind of really looks awesome in itself already, like really detailed with all the pipe work and stuff. So I think this is really nicely. Um, yeah, we can easy, easily integrate that in, in the overall theming. So that's kind of cool. Yep. Yeah, that's actually something worth noting as well. Takabisha is a Eurofighter. And this coaster is an infinity coaster by the same manufacturer. And uh, there are some things that I have to be honest, I wasn't too happy about with this infinity coaster. Uh, mostly the fact that the articulation of the trains isn't realistic. Um, but also, you know, the fact that we got this coaster type in the game is absolutely awesome. This is one of my favorite coaster types and a huge fan favorite for coaster enthusiasts that people have been hoping for, for a really long time. And I think the execution Uh, with those lift hills 
And just how flexible this thing is, because this thing has instantly become the coaster type with the most, the, with the largest amount of special track pieces in the game, I think. Uh, it's really flexible and it's really fun to build layouts with, and it's not too difficult to make it smooth either. For most of these inversions, I ended up using the trick of uh, building it first and trying to get it as smooth as possible, and then deleting all the pieces and letting the, uh, the autocomplete feature finish the pieces so you get these really smooth rolls. And with a lot of trial and error, you can actually get very smooth inversions with this, I found. That's super cool. So that I means you, you didn't really use the farm meter method throughout the whole layout, didn't you? Uh, no, barely actually. Just the, the first barrel roll at the start of the layout is 4 meter method. Uh, 4 meter methoded? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but even that one, I 4 metered the heck out of it. Uh, but then I removed the 4 <laughs> meter pieces and let it let the, uh, the autocomplete feature pretty much so do the roll. And it turned out to be a really smooth barrel roll. It's not perfect. Um, but I think for, you know, a, a player made barrel roll it looks quite good yeah I, you know from i can tell from from your sense of not perfect uh, it is definitely really sufficient for <laughs> us so <laughs> um but yeah like uh, i have to i have to add two things so first of all um you love the coastal manufacturer however i just checked it's not your most favorite ones at least in your newest category um you put out on twitter oh, yeah. it's only in the second category so do you want to talk about that <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's i never expected you'd brought bring that up but uh yeah so there's this youtube channel uh called canada coaster fan who made a tier list of coaster manufacturers and I was waiting for this for a long time. I was actually checking out the tier list website. Uh, this is a website where anybody crea can create a tier list and then you can fill it in with whatever you want. Uh, and I was waiting for anybody to make a coaster manufacturer tier list and all of a sudden, uh, a short while ago, he made one and I created my own division, my own ranking, if you will, of coaster manufacturers in that and put it on Twitter and it caused, uh, for many people, a lot of agreement, uh, but also for many people, a lot of controversy and disagreement with me over how I divided my coaster manufacturers. But I remember I put RMC, Intamin and Great Coasters International in the top tier, and then a bunch of coaster manufacturers in the tier just below that, uh, including Gerslauer. If I remember that's correctly. true that's true apparently i just needed to laugh out so hard as uh, as i was seeing that in your last year mm. there was some parallel in and initially i thought wait a second isn't that a toyota model and i was like wait a second no that's what i made up of of the the freaking video we made for the first of april like the pimp my right one i called it the toyota some oh, yeah, and i was right. like why did i and i was like oh yeah because that shitty manufacturer that's why <laughs> and so i needed to laugh out so hard when i saw that that's the one with um, yeah. Vol Voltaire or Volare um, coaster, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you have written all the manufacturers that you listed, or how does it work? Uh, no, actually, no. I, I excluded Gravity Group out of the list because I thought I hadn't written a Gravity Group coaster. Apparently I have, I just forgot about it. Uh, I've written one in Gronalune, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, I generally excluded the companies that I haven't ridden coasters of or just can't give a good judgment of. But Zamperla is so bad <laughs> that okay. I, I felt I could just put it down there and nobody would disagree with me. I've, I've, yeah, I can only agree f by, by watching videos. I think I never, have I? I don't think so. They've made a lot of flat rides, so you've probably been on some of their rides, maybe just not their coasters. Might be, yeah. Because, like, I have to say, I, I still have to fill in a lot of gaps in terms of coasters. I mean, I've, I've, I've been riding quite a lot of coasters in terms of overall amount, but unfortunately not that variety out of it. Uh, because, like, mainly sticking to Europe, so, yeah. Uh, because when I was right. in the US to be able to, to ride coasters, I was just way too young and actually too small, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't too young eventually, but I was too small, which is really a pity. I remember being in... Uh, Disney, Disneyland Florida and also uh, SeaWorld Florida where are also quite a few of coasters. Um, I could have written them all in terms of age but I was always too small for it like because I yeah even at the age of eight I was way too small so yeah bit mm. unfortunate but hey that's it how it is so I have to go yeah. there eventually someday again. 
Yeah, I also found it interesting how people from different continents uh, really rated different manufacturers differently. So uh, I, I should say that that word different a little bit less there. But you know, uh, a lot of Europeans seem to rate Vekoma quite highly. Uh, we've got some good Vekomas in Europe, I think. And that's only but because then... Michael Jojo is influencing them all. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure maybe that, that too. <laughs> but I think everybody who's been in Poland and wrote those Polish Vekomas is rating them way up on their list. Those things are amazing. Uh, but then all the Americans put it all the way down in their lists because America doesn't get any good Vekomas. And I think the same kind of goes for Togo. I put Togo in a decently high tier. And this is a manufacturer which everybody hates. You know, it never seems to get any good ratings because America and, well, Europe barely got any Togos ever, I think. Uh, but America's got a lot of really bad Togo coasters. But I've only written Togo coasters in Japan and I thought that we, they were quite good. So it's interesting how you get completely different experiences in different continents sometimes. That's true, yeah. Anyway, we're currently at the end of the video pretty much. So... I think that'll be it for today. I'll just let the final POV and cinematic speak for themselves with some music. Um, and yeah, I'd like to thank Rudy and Operateur for being here today with this commentary and for allowing me to be part of this series. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. Thanks. And uh, of course, if you like to follow the rest of the series, please subscribe to their channels as well. There will be lots of interesting content. Maybe I'll come back to do a supports video or something like that. We'll see how we can divide the tasks eventually. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to how this project will pan out. Yep, me too. Same here. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys.
Okay, hold up. This video isn't quite over yet. I wanted to go over the layouts and the different elements that I put into this, because normally that's something that I would talk about during the time lapse. But with our whole joint commentary and trying to explain how this project actually came to be, I couldn't talk too much about the layout itself, and especially in light of my recent Planet Coaster College video on this same coaster, I think it'd be interesting to go over some of the elements and maybe give some tips and ideas along the way and just show my thought process into how this layout came to be. So starting off here, we have the barrel roll right off to the station. I'm actually quite proud of this one. It's very smooth. This is probably the smoothest barrel roll I've ever been able to make in the game, uh, especially one that actually is hardlined. It's definitely not perfect, as you can tell, but altogether it stays in generally the same position throughout the whole roll, so that's quite good. And then into this part where the coaster stops for a bit, which is not supposed to happen, but this is just something that occurs when you're testing the coaster uh, because you can't set the exact timings. Uh, but when the coaster would be you know, running for guests, this should just be a moment where you break a little bit before you go into this dip, which is so typical for Gerstlauer coasters and into a decently strong launch. Then we get the top hat here, which as you can see, it waits quite a while until it banks straight. So you, you really kind of climb for a while before you start turning and go to the top. Normally, or well, I shouldn't say normally, but some other manufacturers that aren't Gerstlauer uh, like to already start twisting, maybe somewhere around here. Uh, so if you look at some Intamin top hats, for example, the one that used to be on Kanonen in Liseberg, uh, you can see that they're, they're differently shaped, definitely. But Gerstlauer seems to like to have their top hats rotate very close to the top of the element so really you just kind of rotate very quickly and then just for a second at the top you don't even get any air time but just for a second you're up straight and then you already rotate again uh, to go back down on the other side into a twisted horseshoe roll which is always a really fun element kind of like a very tall drawn out corkscrew and then a non-inverting loop, which as you can see is pretty smooth. I do have to say for this one, I sacrificed hard lining over smoothness. In Planet Coaster, it's quite difficult to make a smooth coaster and it's nearly impossible to make a smooth and hard lined inversion. Uh, so for this one, I eventually decided to sacrifice the hard lines. As you can see, it's a very straight element. Um, but altogether, I think it looks a bit better than having a perfectly hard-lined element that's not smooth. And I wasn't able to get both done at the same time like I was for the barrel roll at the start of the layout. Nonetheless, I'm pretty happy with the smoothing, uh, with the, the overall shape of this element. And then into the Stangle Dive here, a little bit overbanked, as they should be. Quite snappy on those transitions. And into an Immelman, which is pretty much a very standard Immelman. And also a twisted airtime hill here, which doesn't have too much airtime, but I think it's a nice element to transition into the brake runs. And after that, we start the second half of this layout. So as you can see, it's definitely very much inspired by Takabisha, which follows the same program. You know, having a barrel roll after the station into a launch, and then the second part of the layout, which starts with the vertical lift hill and beyond vertical drop. I guess the only difference really here is that I'm using all kinds of different elements in a different order in an overall different layout setup. Uh, although there are some elements which are returning from Takabisha and that's something that I'll come back to in a second. For now our train has finally reached the top there and going down into what I can only call an inclined dive loop. There's a very rare element of the, the inclined loop which is kind of like a loop put on its side. And this is similar to that, but it's a dive loop. So yeah, I'm really just following the curvature of the element with this banking here. So there should hopefully be as few laterals as possible. It'll just kind of feel like a vertical loop, except you're kind of on your side. And from that, we move into an ejector airtime hill. There's definitely a lot more airtime on the, uh, the second half of the ride here, especially this hill here provides some really sustained and very even airtime throughout the whole hill. And after that we move into sort of a zero G roll. It also does a bit of a curve, but really I only had to do that to get to the right position for the banana roll there. Um, but yeah, I guess I could call that a zero G roll. That's mostly what I'm going for. 
And then after that, we finally move into the banana roll, which I have to say, I think this thing is a bit too tight. As you can see, the cars kind of struggle to get through it, uh, which is partly also because of the articulations of the cars. They aren't exactly right in the game, but whatever. Uh, but I, I did make this a little bit too tight. That said, this is the first ever barrel roll that I've tried that kind of works. So I don't want to destroy this thing. This is the best barrel roll that I've made so far. So I'm pretty happy with it into a very small bunny hop for a little bit more airtime. And here's a not entirely sure what I should call this. It's kind of like a big barrel roll or a very drawn out uh, corkscrew. Basically, the reason for the, the kind of strange shaping of this roll is to get to this part over the station because I wanted to have some kind of station flyby that'll be interesting for Rudy and Operateur to work with. But altogether, I think this element works out quite well and it's quite smooth as well. And then it's pretty much just finishing the course, so nothing too interesting happening here. Just a few curves and then we get back into the brake run. And that's the layout. So yeah, altogether, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's quite a smooth layout and it's been a lot of fun trying out making all of these different elements because quite a number of these I've never actually made uh, seriously. So it's been a lot of fun to work on this layout. And in the next episode, I've heard that Operateur is making episode two to be the building process of the, the crane and the general harbor area over here, which looks absolutely amazing. The level of detail that he went into is really astounding. Even all of these little nails and stuff like that, which are apparently billboard holders, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to even select them, but yeah, it's a screen mount wall, as you can see. So yeah, there's lots of really interesting details in this build there. So that's something you could see on Operateur's channel for now. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this episode and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of this project, which will probably be on Operateur's channel. Bye guys!